mercy as the song says his grace and mercy has brought me through I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you too your grace and mercy has brought me through we're thanking God for this Pentecost season we celebrated last Sunday the feast of Pentecost the beginning of the Pentecost season Pentecost is a season it is not just a day we want to welcome you to our broadcast today welcome you to our live stream Facebook live and all the other ways in which you can access us or will access us even after Sunday I want to encourage you to stay with us through the broadcast I want to stay encourage you to stay with us through the service God's got something exponentially special for each one of you God bless you is our prayer hello Cathedral family friends we want to welcome you to today's Sunday service why don't you take the time to just take time and invite other people to come and join you this morning. Why don't you like, why don't you click, why don't you share right now so that other people can join in this unforgettable experience as we get ready to worship the Lord together. Worship the Lord together with us this morning. Make a joyful noise, all ye people. Sing a song unto the Lord of his goodness and his mercy. Sing a song unto the Lord and let us worship the Lord together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today once again for being with us today. We thank you, Lord God, because we acknowledge you as being our Lord, our Savior, and our King. There's nobody above you, dear Lord, and we would want to worship you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us from Sunday to Sunday. We woke up this morning with a right mind. We had food on our table and clothes over our back. We thank you, Lord God, for the roof over our head last night and waking us up in our right mind, activity of our limbs. Nobody else could have done that, Lord, but you. So we want to thank you, dear God, for what you're doing in each of our lives. Now, dear Lord, we invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit in this, in this service today. Help us, Lord God, to worship you as never before. 
pray, Lord God, you give us Holy Ghost-inspired attentiveness as we hear the word of the Lord this morning. Through the word of the Lord, we pray, Lord God, the people will be drawn unto you. And so drawn unto you, we pray, Lord God, that they might be saved today. We thank you, Lord God, for the people who were saved last week on our outdoor service. Now, the Lord, do the same thing this morning. Draw your people this morning, Lord God, so they can hear the word for the first time. If they hear the word for the first time, we pray, Lord God, that you will be glorified, they will be edified, and your church will grow. So once again, we thank you, Lord God, for bringing us to this time. Thank you, Lord God, for you God, be with us in this service. We thank you, Lord God, for the cathedral and its unforgettable experience. Have your way in this service today. It's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Somebody have fun with it. Right here. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, somebody rock with us. You know the song. Everybody say yeah! 
image and into your likeness. We say hallelujah to you, Jesus. To the one that can change us from the inside out. To the one that can heal us. We say hallelujah to you, Jesus. We lift our hands and we lift our voices and we say hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Our souls sing to you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my soul will sing. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul will sing. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul. praise we give you the highest praise we open up wells of worship for you hey we open up wells of worship for you in Jesus name we ask that you would create more space God give us more capacity for your presence because your presence is in us your presence is on us already so we're asking Jesus that you would create more space we want to be a reservoir where we can host your presence we want to be exactly who you want us to be in Jesus name so we sing hallelujah 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 we say
praise to the Lord. He wants to hear your voice wherever you are. It doesn't matter if you're on your couch, your bed, in the park, in the supermarket. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah to the risen Savior. Hallelujah to the risen King. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. From the depths of my heart. 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 We should mock you in this moment. We should mock you in this moment. We give you a high praise. we poured before you because you've never held back your choices blessings from us so we will always give you our worship every time we have the chance and every time we have the opportunity we're always going to give you worship we're always going to come back to this intimate place with you because we've seen people come and we've seen people go but we thank you that you are the God that stays the same yesterday hey today Hey, and forevermore, we praise you. Your praise will continually be in our mouths, Jesus. Your praise will ever be on our lips, God. You deserve it, God, so we magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you, God. We magnify you. In spite of what we got going on in our personal life, we magnify you. In spite of what we've been through, we magnify you, Jesus. We've seen you do it for our ancestors. You brought us through the civil rights movement. Hallelujah. You're bringing us through the Black Lives Matter movement. And we give you praise, hey, for all that you've done in our lives, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for reigning in our lives, God. Thank you for purifying us, purifying us, purifying our lives, purifying the temple, the physical temple. God, but we thank you for purifying our temple so that we can be more pleasing to you, so that we can walk in your image and into your likeness. We love you, Jesus. It's an honor to stand in this place. So we pray that you would have your way, God. Clean us, forgive us, forgive us, forgive us from sin. God, help us, God, to search our hearts. Would you search our hearts? Help us to repent from our wicked ways. For you said in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, God, we turn from wickedness. Wickedness in high places and low places. Wickedness in the places that we think that people can't see but your eyes see all and know all, God, so we repent. Repentance is a scary word sometimes for some people these days, but we repent because we want to be in your will, in the center of your will, in your likeness. We want to be in this place, God. So have your way in us and through us. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Great hymn of the church. Joys are flowing like a river since the comforter has come. He abides with us forever, makes the trusting heart his home. Blessed quietness, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me, and the billows cease to roll, bringing life and 
wealth and gladness all around this heavenly guest. Banished unbelief and sadness changed our weariness to rest. Oh, blessed quietness. Oh, holy quietness, what assurance in my soul. On the stormy sea, he speaks peace to me. How the billows cease to roll. What a wonderful salvation. Where we always see his face, what a perfect habitation, what a quiet resting place, oh blessed quietness, holy quietness, what a assurance in my soul on the stormy sea he speaks peace to me how the billows cease to roll blessed quietness holy quietness what assurance in my soul on the stormy sea he speaks peace to me how the billows cease to roll oh, blessed quietness holy quietness what assurance in my soul on the stormy sea he speaks peace to me how the billows cease to roll september 16th through the 18th 2021 is longevity longevity 2021 we are moving forward in structure strategy into survival as we move our lives our ministries our businesses our churches to the next level through it all it's been a challenging year but the grace and the mercy of god has been for us an ever-present help in the time of trouble. I want you to prepare now to register. It's going to be absolutely amazing. You'll see the list of speakers very soon. It's really going to be amazing. Last year was amazing, but this is going to be amazing. And I want you to register. I want you to get the word out. Pastors and leaders, Longevity Gathering 2021. I want to see you there. God bless you. Hey, Cathedral International, it's Pastor Just from the Communications Department. I need you to stop what you're doing and text CI to 833-758-0353 so that you can get connected and receive all of our text alerts and updates regarding the ministry. Don't forget, text CI to 833-758-0353. Make sure you do it today. Praise the Lord, everybody. The end of June is always a special time in our church. It is Holy Convocation time. And we are grateful for Holy Convocation. Holy Convocation is one Friday night. And Saturday, we're having a Convocation family picnic. And we'll be celebrating my 64th birthday. I want you to be there. We're going to have something for the children, uh, from, from, from babies right on up to the senior citizens. It's going to be a great day. Friday night is Holy Convocation, and our guest speakers are the Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart, Memphis, Tennessee, and the Reverend Dr. William Watley of Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be an amazing evening. I want you to prepare now to be there. It's Convocation time. The theme is the Forward Church. We're going forward in spite of it all. We're going to the next level. God bless you. Don't forget to join us. Holy Convocation. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord has met us again today, and we are so grateful for your participation. Thank the Lord for your seed gifts and your tithing and your special offerings. Uh, we, frankly speaking, we could not uh, really have done what we've been doing the last 15 months. We got a major staff, we got a lot of people, we got a lot of responsibilities, we have a lot of outreach. Even though the doors of the church have been closed, the ministries have continued to go forth, and it is because of the generosity of the people of God. Thank you so very much. And then God bless these first fruit gifts. And we pray now, God, that you'd sanctify the rest of the year. And I pray, God, that you would bless and prosper your people, that they would be in health even as their soul prospers. Bless us, sanctify us, meet every need, be glorified, even in this time of offerings and first fruits. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, family, and thank you so much. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody, and thank the Lord for his goodness and his grace. The Lord's grace and mercy has brought us to this place, and we give him thanks. It's an honor to be here, an honor to teach the word and preach the word, as we have sought as a church to be faithful every Sunday during this pandemic, as we are now experiencing going into the 15th month. But it will not be as long as it's been. And in just a little while, we'll all be together in worshiping the Lord together. 
in the beauty of holiness in the Lord's holy tabernacle. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we magnify your name. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for your presence and your holy power. We pray now for your special anointing on this word. And we pray, God, that you would bless the people that hear and sanctify me and anoint these lips of clay that they will speak your truth. We thank you for those that have tuned in from all over the world. And we pray that we would be mindful that the gospel is a worldwide gospel. It goes beyond our small circles. This is a worldwide gospel, and we give you thanks and praise. Bless us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. The scripture comes to us today from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning with the second, uh, the first verse. I want to read today right on into the 13th verse. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like as a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there sat upon them divided tongues as of fire, and it sat on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, when they heard this sound, the multitude came together and they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. They were amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And, say they, and so they were all amazed and they were perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to uh, teach today from the subject, the power of his presence. This is the Pentecost season where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. But not only do we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to abide in the earth forever, but we also celebrate and reaffirm our commitment as a church to the gift of the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We affirm that we believe in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came down from heaven and with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. We celebrate this truth, this reality during this season. You know, when I was a boy, there was a popular TV show called What's My Line? And in it, three people were supposed to act like they were authentic. Two participants in the show were supposed to pose a question to those that were there and to try to stump them. And thereby, they were exposing the imposters. In the end, the show's host would say, would the real whomever please stand up? And they would kind of act like each of them is going to stand. And, and then those that were not authentic would remain seated, and the authentic stood. I said the authentic stood, and the imposters remained seated. To me, this is a foundational truth, a foundational revelation that we who affirm and believe in the power of the living Holy Spirit ought to show some evidence, and the evidence is beyond speaking in other tongues, but the evidence is going into all the world and preaching this gospel and reaching all in the name of Jesus. As I look at this text, Acts chapter 2, uh, particularly verses 2 through 5, we read right on through verse 13, we see a group of eager, spirit-filled believers who were authentic, meaning that they were sincere, 
they were consecrated and they were committed. They were very human and yet very hungry for God. And they took the mandate of Jesus, go and wait in the city, go and wait into Jerusalem until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Some may say the Holy Ghost, same thing, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, but go and stay until you receive the Holy Ghost. And as you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will give you the power that you need to go into all the world. The Holy Spirit gives you power. When we walk with God, the Holy Spirit gives us power to stay in His presence, to live in His presence, and I want to even stretch and say to enjoy His presence. One of the things I need to say here is that when you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, He gives you joy. You know, growing up also in the church and being a young minister, um, it was very popular in the early days of my ministry. You would see the different flyers, so-and-so was in a revival, so-and-so was singing. Everybody looked so serious and so overly deep and really mean. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost gives you joy. And the Holy Ghost gives you authenticity. And when we look at these 120 apostles and disciples together, waiting on the power of the Holy Spirit, they were all on one accord in one place with one prayer, with one focus, that they would receive the Holy Spirit, which came from God. As I said last week and the week before, God the Father sent Jesus the Son to dwell in the earth. Jesus the Son was crucified, died, and buried. He rose from the dead on the third day. He lived among the disciples. And the scripture says, and then he ascended into heaven. Fifty days after the Passover experience, Jesus was ascended into heaven, and then God sent the power of the Holy Spirit in the earth. In the Old Testament, we would read about the Holy Spirit coming upon princes and kings and priests for a specific purpose. Now we have the Holy Spirit dwelling and abiding with God's people forever. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall understand that there's power in His presence. The church is on fire when the power of His presence is real. The, the saints are on fire when the power of His presence is real. We repent of sin quicker when the power of His presence is real. We are more inclined to allow the Holy Spirit to convict us of personal sin and corporate sin when the power of the Holy Spirit is real. This holy power gave the church, hear me now, internally and externally conviction. The Holy Ghost gives you internal conviction and external conviction. The Holy Spirit gives you principles and those principles will guide your work and they will guide your ministry. Authentic Christianity should be seen by the whole world. Authentic Christianity is a Christianity that does not keep to itself but goes into all the world and, and, and feeds the hungry and clothes the naked and speaks truth to power and speaks peace in the midst of violence and speaks justice in the midst of injustice. When the Holy Ghost is real, the church is on fire. When the Holy Ghost is real, the saints go up to worship. When the Holy Ghost is real, wherever Holy Ghost-filled believers are, the community that they're in ought to be changed. As I'm sitting in this seat now, I'm looking at the back wall of the Heritage Hall, and I'm noticing that several of the pictures depict the Cathedral International when we were just the Second Baptist Church. We used to have these summer crusades on a regular, these summer crusades. We would have them near the projects of the city. All the projects of the city have been torn down now, but we used to go to those projects every summer. We'd have parades throughout the street. We would give out candy. Uh, the, the brothers would play ball with the little fellas, and, and we would have food, and, and we'd give out gifts at Christmas. The people knew that there was something going on 
down there on Broad Street and later down on Madison Avenue. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. It was not just the idea of a person. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that wanted to be actively engaged. Hear me. Actively engaged in the affairs of the community. The Holy Spirit desires that we, even in this hour, become actively engaged in our communities and actively engaged in our world. We're living in a very trying time. As I was driving here today, another mass shooting occurred, I believe, in San Jose, California. Another mass shooting occurred. It was a mass shooting last week. Yesterday, we observed the one-year anniversary of the horrific, uh, terroristic murder of George Floyd. God is concerned. God is concerned not just about Jesus being preached to the whole world, but God is concerned that Jesus is demonstrated to the whole world, that the hungry are fed, the lonely are, are befriended, and that the low are raised up. God is concerned that we have a voice to see, speak in this hour that we're living. We have a voice to remind people that even though we're living in a very challenged time, a very... Um, uh, uh, divided time and a very fear-filled time that God is still alive, that Jesus Christ is still alive, and the Holy Spirit will give you the power to be authentic, give you the power to be engaged, and give you the power not only to be engaged, but the power also to be excited. You know, it, it's a challenge when I go to churches and I don't sense excitement. I'm not just talking about running the aisles and, and shouting and giving God an applause and clapping. I'm talking about just excitement about being in the house of the Lord. Excited because our sins have been forgiven. Excited because we have a right now to the tree of life. Excited because Jesus Christ is alive and well. When the Holy Ghost is real, you will not only feel his presence, but you will act like you are in his presence. I believe that it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit that the kingdom of God can come in the earth. You know that prayer, and Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. That is a desire of God, that there would be kingdom reign and kingdom rule and kingdom authority in the earth through the Lord's church. Now, I believe that this is probably more important now than it was 20 years ago, as we are looking now at a descending uh, from the church, as we are looking now at masses of people leaving the Christian faith, masses of people who were in the Christian faith, leaving the Christian faith. Some say that we are in the midst of the great falling away. I contend and I believe and I affirm that the power of the Holy Spirit can bring us back to God. And the power of the Holy Spirit can not only bring us back to God, but revive those of us that are still in God and that are still in the church and, and realign us, realign us with the word. When the Holy Ghost is real, not only will you speak in tongues, but you'll speak to your neighbor. You'll help other people. You'll love your wife. You'll love your husband, your spouse, your partner. You'll take care of your children. You'll pay child support. You'll give to the needy, to the poor, the needy. You'll make sure that your commitment to the church is carried out. You'll make sure that everybody that you see in your space that is broken, you, there's a desire for them to be healed. Now, while I'm at it right now, because I feel this unction right now in this service, somebody's being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody is being healed. Right now in this service, someone is being healed. In this service, someone is being healed. I witness it now as I'm speaking, going down the back of your neck. You've been in pain. You've not been able to move your neck. Right now, you're able to move your neck in the power of the Holy Spirit. You're being healed. It's not hocus pocus, dominocus. It's just calling it out as the Holy Ghost has revealed it. Receive everything that God has for you in this season of Pentecost. I want to encourage all of us, just as that uh, What's My Line TV show was, I want to encourage those of us who are real to stand up unashamedly. Stand up and lift your hands. Stand up and glorify God. Stand up and reach under the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. 
I want to encourage us in this teaching to be sold out for God. I want to encourage us to be giving and loving and forgiving and sharing. God wants us to walk like we have experienced power and fire. I want to just also say something about the personal responsibility. The Holy Ghost is not only concerned about your concern for others. Hear me, don't, don't miss this. But the Holy Ghost is concerned also about your concern for yourself. I know we pray for everybody else, but what about you? Pray for yourself. Lord, touch me. Lord, anoint me. Lord, set me on fire. Lord, help me move with faith to my next. Lord, prosper me and expand my territory that I may be a blessing to others. So often we spend all of our time because we think it's the righteous thing to do just to pray for others. But God is concerned about you and the power of the Holy Spirit will help you and energize you to move to your next, your next job, the next dream. Uh, the next vision. God will give you the grace at not to be discouraged in well-doing. Be, be not weary in doing good, for we shall reap in due season if we faint not. Beloved, I want to encourage you to seek the face of God. I want to encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to saturate our minds, our thoughts, our body, and our soul, and to saturate our lifestyles. In his book, The Celebration of Disciplines, Richard Foster writes that the world is waiting for a group of spirit-filled believers full of fire to turn the world upside down. It has happened before, he says, and it can happen again. I want to say that again. The world is waiting for a group of spirit-filled believers full of fire to turn the world upside down. It has happened before, and it is, can happen again. And I would like to make an addendum to that statement I would like to say that it not only has happened before and it can happen again, I want to add that it must happen again. It must, if the church is going to survive in these days of increasing secularism, in the days of high tech but low touch, we must have a, a, a visitation of God in the earth. There must be a falling of the Holy Spirit on the church, it can happen again. The world is still hungry, beloved, for living bread. The world is hungry to see authentic believers. The world is hungry for living bread, and we are called to lift the Savior up for them to see. So Holy Spirit, blow fresh wind on these cold hearts of ours and breathe on our minds, our bodies, and our souls. Holy Spirit, tear down walls of division and walls of unforgiveness. Holy Spirit, bring parent and child back together on the same page. Holy Spirit, put an end to gang violence and, 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 and all of the injustices that we see in the land. And then finally, Holy Spirit of the living God, bring dignity to all persons. That's right. When the Holy Ghost is real, God wants to see every person seen as a person of dignity and a person of wealth. Even if you don't understand a person's lifestyle and direction that they're going, everybody is seen by God as worthy. And we ought to treat everyone with dignity and respect. Finally, the church grew because the gospel was preached and the gospel was practiced. The gospel was preached and the gospel was practiced. If we could have that as a takeaway today, I said the gospel was preached and the gospel was practiced. So often we preach a thing and we live another. We sing a thing, but we live another. The gospel was preached and the gospel was practiced. When the Holy Spirit is real and alive, from the moment people reach holy ground, they'll begin to feel the holy presence of the living God. The Holy Ghost is real. The Holy Ghost is available. The Holy Ghost, the paraclete of God, paraclete means comforter and advocate. The paraclete of God gives peace and the power of the Holy Spirit is real. 
And we ask the Holy Ghost today, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Mold me and break me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, Lord, and let it overflow. Come now, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove. Hallelujah, quicken us. Anoint us afresh and anew. Fill us up. Baptize us. We come to you just as we are. And like those early disciples, we are hungering for divine visitation. Some of us, Lord, are just weary these last 15 months in the season of hunger. Fill us, Lord, and feed us now. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. your hands right now, wherever you are, lift those hands. Bread of heaven, Bread of heaven. touch God right now. Touch heaven. I want no more. In the name of Jesus, anoint us. My cup. Anoint us. Come, lift it up and be Beloved, in this sacred moment, in this holy moment, I can't think of a better time to say, yes, Lord, come into my life and change my life. I accept you as my Savior, my Lord, and my God. That's the first altar call. I want Jesus to be real. I want to be born again. I want to be saved. I, I, or, or I want to come back to God. I've left God. Some of you have left God. Some of you have just let it go, and whichever way your children turn out, it just didn't matter. Holy Ghost will give you that urging, not only for you and your family and your marriage, but, but your children. The scripture, if you keep reading chapter 2, it says that this promise is not only for you, but to your children and your children's children, and to those, to the many that the Lord our God shall call. I want to encourage you to receive the Lord. There's a number right here on the screen I want to receive Christ. Number two, I want to unite with this church. I want to unite with this ministry. Thank God for the many of you that have connected with us. We praise the Lord for you. I want you to become a part of this church. Come on in. Once we open up, come on back in. We got some services that we're going to be doing outside. It'll be on the screen. But I want you to, to make a commitment to the church. You can become a part of the e-church. Thirdly, Bishop Hilliard, I want to be baptized in water. I want you to let us know. In fact, you can type it right in right now. I want to be baptized. Or you can call the number. I want to be baptized. We're, we will baptize you, whether it's in the pool at the cathedral or in the ocean on the 25th of July. Huge baptism down there in Asbury Park. But Jesus Christ is real. And I invite you to come to know him in a very personal way. Eternal God, our Father, save, deliver, and heal, restore, renew, and revive. We commit this time to you now in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen and amen and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord has met us again today, and we are so grateful for your participation. Thank the Lord for your seed gifts and your tithing and your special offerings. Uh, we, Frankly speaking, we could not uh, really have done what we've been doing the last 15 months we got a major staff. we got a lot of people. we got a lot of responsibilities. We have a lot of outreach. 
even though the doors of the church have been closed, the ministries have continued to go forth, and it is because of the generosity of the people of God. Thank you so very much. And then I want to encourage you to keep the faith. Please stay connected to our uh, website, cathedralinternational.org. Uh, stay connected. Make sure that you're getting the phone call. I give a phone call out to everyone that wants one every week. There's a phone call that comes from me personally. There's an e-blast that comes to you personally uh, from our media department. And then I want to also give a great thank you to all of those who make up the back end of this ministry um, to make things happen the way they're happening. I, like you, cannot wait to be in church. I, like you, heard the governor's directive of freeing everyone from masking and uh, social distancing. Um, I still think it is a very dangerous, dangerous time, and we will do nothing that we feel is going to put you in any kind of danger or harm's way. I am vaccinated. My wife is vaccinated. I want to encourage you to read the science, and I want to encourage you to uh, get the vaccination. Uh, follow at your own level of comfort, and we will open up the church soon. There'll be some soft openings, and we're hoping, hoping to have the church opened uh, completely. We are hoping in the month of September. Let's pray to that end that God would hasten the day where we can all come together and worship him as one great big family. And then finally, a great shout out to everybody who shares with us from all over. We thank you. We see you. Amen. From Pakistan and from India. We see you. North Carolina, South Carolina. We see you from Nairobi. God bless you. Thank you for sharing. Please prepare now for the final blessing and the benediction. And now unto him was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, praise, and power, and dominion, henceforth, now, and forevermore. To the God that is able to make all grace abound towards you and keep food on your table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and prosperity within your walls. May God give you peace and power. May you be filled with this precious Holy Spirit, and may you be enabled to walk in the light as he is in the light. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God, and amen, amen, amen. God bless you.
side. Close to your side. Heaven is real. Death is a lie. Death is a lie. I want to hear voices. I want to hear voices. Have angels above. Have angels above. Singing as one. Singing as one. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice. Singing as one. Singing as one. Hallelujah. 